If you could give up some things and know that you're going to start feeling more inspiring energy, would that be something you'd be interested in doing? If you knew that by changing some of your behaviors, letting go of some things that sort of pull you down, and when we do that, then we'll actually automatically start to have more inspiring energy. Is that something you would want to do? Yeah, we do, don't we? That's what we're talking about today. We're talking about transcending uninspiring energy. Is there any uninspiring energy in your world? <laughs> oh, yeah, right? Well, you know, it's interesting because, you know, one would wonder why it is there uninspiring energy in the world. Why does it exist? The Old Testament says God created man upright, but lo, he has created many inventions. We're creating in the image and likeness of spirit, in the image and likeness of God. We're creating the image of love, image of joy, image of peace, image of all good. And lo, we have created many inventions. We have forgotten who we are. That's what we've been talking about in this series, Living an Inspired Life, is that we're meant to live in spirit, but we've forgotten who we are. The Indian sage Patanjali said that we have come to believe in the false self, the false self being the ego, the ego, the sense of separation, the ego that believes it needs outer things, it needs recognition, the ego that believes it, it needs to be feel superior to others, the, the ego that thinks it's separate, that gets caught up into anger and fear and envy and jealousy and all that kind of stuff. And consequently, because individuals have we fallen into the ego, our society reflects it. And it's as he points out, it's built around ego. And we see that in the media. We see that in advertising. And we see that in entertainment. It's built promoting the ego. Building up the ego. So I want to talk about that today. It's interesting that it used to be that the news people got was basically in their village. You know, you lived in a village, and you didn't get a lot of news. You got news from the other villagers, and, and you only got occasional bad news. You might hear about a, a, a hurricane or a storm or, or maybe a community member who behaved poorly, and you heard about that, you know, but most of it was good news. You were involved in your work and with your family. These were villages. And nowadays, we pay experts to go out and dig up bad news from all over the globe. So now we got news, most of it bad news, coming to us everywhere we are. We carry it with us with our smartphones. We see it on TV, in the radio, in the newspaper, online. And, you know, that's what media does. I'm not saying all media. We're not saying, uh, you know, personally, I'm glad we have media. Media can help us know what's going on. And we're not saying don't know what's going on. But the question is, how much do we expose ourselves to it? And, and so there's a few things we want to talk about. First of all, awareness. And then developing a defense to these messages that we get all the time. What do we do about it? Because a lot of it is negative. A lot of it is negative. Why is that? Well, some say it's because people are more fear-oriented. They're more motivated by fear than they are pleasure, pain than they are pleasure. And it's addicting. Negative news is addictive. And, and people are paid to go out to find out what is the negative news. Isn't it true? And then they broadcast it. 
If something happens, if someone's killed or murdered, they get eyewitnesses, they interview the people in the neighborhood, they tell you, and they've got to fill up news for 24 hours, seven days a week. They've got to have something to say. And so they go in great detail about what happened. And if that's not enough, they'll dig it up a year later and bring back the same story. Well, we know that last year this is what happened, and the truck drove off, the bus went off the cliff, and da-da-da-da, and five, it's the five-year anniversary of when that bus went off the cliff. It's the negative news all over again. And, you know, why do they do it? Because people watch it. People watch it. Why do people watch it? It's addictive. And it, it appeals with the ego, the ego that's rooted in separation, rooted in fear, rooted in negativity, and all that kind of stuff. And so they it, we're bombarded with it. And it's important that we be aware of how is the message making me feel? That's essentially what he's saying. If you tune into the media and you see something and what is your gut telling you? If your gut says, I don't need to watch this, then we can turn it off, right? Yeah. There is an off switch. We can change the channel. We can turn it off. Now, one of the things I noticed, and we're going to enter that time again here, shoot, soon, you know, a few years ago where there were people just, well, even nowadays, right? It's just, I guess, everywhere now. People get very dramatic and very upset about stuff. And I've noticed some of the people that would get the most upset about stuff, they watch the news a lot. They're buried in the media. And, you know, I'm, I don't think it's negative to recognize something that is. Right? It's not negative to recognize something that is. And... The media is designed, a lot of it, I'm not saying everybody, but it's designed to stir up emotions. I can almost, some of you are probably in the media or have worked in the media, you can tell me, but I bet there are lists of words that they want their newscasters to use that are trigger words. I, I guarantee it. Just like in advertising, there are lists, of, there's books on what words to use that trigger buying behavior. You know, the word free. The word free. The word amazing. We got an amazing offer. Amazing deal. Amazing this. To trigger buying. Well, in the news, there are words that upset people. There are words that stir people up. Why? Because they want to arouse emotion. We are, we are uh, largely emotional, the humanness of us, largely emotional. And so they want to stir up emotion, and the ego gets addicted to it. And I think it's important that we become aware of it. And I've noticed some people, they get all upset about stuff, you know, you can see the, the conversations are full of drama and I don't like what he's doing and what she's doing and they're doing and that. How much do you watch the media? You know, how much of this do you feed your, your consciousness? And my guess is a lot. My guess is a lot. Because, again, that's what they're paid to do. That's what they're paid to do. So what can we do? We can remind ourselves... Is this making me feel good? The late, great yogi sage Muktananda said, feeling good is feeling God. Feeling good is feeling God. How many of you all like to feel good? We like to feel good, right? That our soul doesn't like to feel good, maybe. I mean, our ego, our soul loves to feel good. Our ego gets caught up in the negativity. It's a habit. So we can ask ourselves when we're shown negative media, is this helping me to feel good? Or is this pulling me down? If it's pulling me down, why am I going to keep watching it? 
Now, I'm not saying don't be informed. I personally, I read headlines. I read headlines. I spend maybe 5, 10, probably maximum 15 minutes looking at headlines and maybe reading an article I want to know more about. I like Reuters. It used to be that, you know, for me, Reuters is pretty objective, it seems. You know, these media companies are owned by people, right? And I've heard they reflect the, the owner's biases. You know, certain medias are, are more liberal or more conservative, la, 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 depending on who owns it. It's not objective. I read the headlines, and most of them are negative. But every now and then, there's something positive and interesting. And that's it. I'm informed. I used to not even do that. I figured, you know what? If I need to know something, I'll find out. But now, in my role, I feel like now oh, every day I need to check at least the headlines, find out if there's anything definitely that I need to know. But you know, I heard someone not long ago, she said, I feel guilty about not watching what's going on in, in Palestine and, and the Gaza Strip. I feel guilty about not watching the news and, and all, of, all of that stuff. And my thought was, why? What good is watching the news doing the people in Gaza Strip? Amen. Or Israel? Or Ukraine? Or Russia? Watching the news doesn't help anybody. It's not doing something to feel bad. Feeling worse and bad about something isn't changing the situation. In fact, it's adding to the negativity in the world. Now, if it motivates us to protest, write a letter to a congressperson, get involved in politics, uh, develop, go to Palestine and lead communication mediation workshops or something, great. That does something. If it leads us to pray and say, I sent, I mean, we could read the newspaper. And my parents used to read the paper at breakfast, right? Out comes the coffee, out comes the cereal, and out comes the newspaper. Now, my parent, mom, and stepfather, I think they read probably the leisure section more than anything else. But, you know, the, you can, we can be informed without letting it disturb us. We can read the paper, we can watch the news, and instead of, oh, that's so horrible, that's terrible, I can't believe they're doing that, da-da-da-da, how about taking a moment to do something that actually will make a difference, which is I now affirm that divine order, love, and harmony are established in between Israel and Palestine, that divine order is now established there, that there is peace and harmony and love and protection for all. You know, I mean, now we're talking about doing something positive, making a difference. Our spiritual energy can transform negative energy, right? So he advises us, ask the question, is this making me feel good? If not, then why should I watch more of it? And just by learning to refrain from taking in uninspiring energy, our energy will naturally become more inspiring. Really. Does that make sense? So we're not saying don't be informed. We're not saying don't watch, don't be aware of stuff going on. But how is it affecting you? If it's true that we all vibrate energy and our energy affects and we're connected to everyone else, then what good is vibrating in sadness and anger and frustration and all that? going to do? How about a powerful, positive energy of love and harmony and peace? Enough to know what's going on. And then, you know, the villages, they didn't have a lot of the news. Now we're bombarded all around the globe with it. Everything. So we got to be selective. So transcending the media energy. When you start feeling, if you tune it in and and you feel like it's having a down effect on, your, on you, 
you don't have to listen anymore. You can withdraw your consciousness from it. You can turn it off or change the channel. Wayne Dyer says, ask this question when watching the media. Is this a match to how I want to feel? If I continue to stay connected to these energies, will I feel good, God, or bad? Will I feel, it's simple, isn't it? Will I feel good, which is God, or will I feel bad? And then we have the world of advertising. Great point. Everybody want, is selling, right? Everywhere you look, there's sales messages. Everywhere we look. The phone, the internet, everywhere. The newspapers, the magazines, everywhere are trying to get our attention to sell us something. Absolutely everywhere. And the messages that they're giving us are you're incomplete within yourself. You're not whole. You need this brand to be whole. You need this outfit to be whole. You need this product to be whole. You're not whole. You're not complete. And so people are buying products to try to feel whole and complete. And we can know that I am whole and complete. I don't need anything else to be happy. I don't need another thing to be happy. That doesn't mean we don't enjoy things. Doesn't mean we don't enjoy a new outfit. Doesn't mean we don't enjoy a new car. Doesn't mean we don't enjoy a new TV set. Doesn't mean we don't enjoy something in the world. But we get it knowing this isn't make me whole. I'm already whole. I'm a spiritual being. I don't need anything to be whole. I am created in the image and likeness of God. We can even enjoy the advertisements and enjoy what they say and do. I mean, a lot of them are funny, really, aren't they? This is, I remember when the advertisements started to get more humorous. You know, they started to be more entertaining. It's not because they want to entertain us. It's because they want us to buy stuff. And they appeal to our emotions. They want to associate positive emotion with their product. That's what it's about. They spend billions of dollars to hook people into buying the products. And they do it by pushing people's buttons of you're not good enough. You're not whole enough. You need something to be complete. And so as spiritual beings, we can say, no, I don't buy that. I don't need that to be whole and complete. I am whole and complete within myself. One of my favorite affirmations is I am completely happy and content within myself. I am completely happy and content within myself. I don't need some kind of designer this or designer to be happy and content. I might get it. Somebody might give it to me. I might enjoy it, but I don't need it to be happy and content. I am completely happy and content within myself. You want to try that one on? Try that on this holiday season. It's, we're having a sale on that. It's 20% off. I am completely happy and content within myself. Together, I am completely happy and content within myself. So recognizing that you are whole. You don't need something to make you whole. Because And the other thing is that we see a lot in advertising is drugs. You need this drug. You need this drug. It's doctor recommended. And go ask your doctor about this drug because you need this drug. When Dr. Dyer wrote this book in 2006... He said 50% of shows are sponsored by pharmaceutical companies. One of the Christmas decorations fell off. It was shocked by that statistic. Absolutely shocked. I wonder what it is now. I mean, one of the channels I watch, they always have some kind of 
medicine on there. You know, some kind of medication. Ask your doctor about this. Ask your doctor. You need this. You need this. And, you know, and if you, and they have smiling people, you know, a smiling wife and a smiling husband. That medicine's working. And you need that. And we get all caught up in, the, oh, aren't they happy? Maybe I should ask my doctor about this. And then they have the fine print. This medicine will kill you if you... Watch out, you might die suddenly. You might have a stroke. Your genitals might fall off. You might lose all your relationships by this. You know? But we don't hear that. We're too busy looking at all the smiling people. I got to ask my doctor about that. And then you got people sneezing and dripping all over the, the commercial. You know, Oh, you know, and, and what's the idea? It's to get us into that feeling of, oh, golly, yeah, maybe I need something. And if we're not careful, we'll accept those impressions, and they could have an impact on us. When I watch that stuff, you know, people sneezing on TV and whatnot, I put up a cross. <laughs> I'm like, get back, get back. And so he points out, remind yourself that your body and your mind is the greatest pharmaceutical company in the world. That your body and your mind can create health and heal anything. Right? We don't need... Now, there are drugs that are great. The medical community has done a lot of wonderful things. There are a lot of great drugs and a lot of great treatments, believe me. I was so grateful when my mom, who had bone cancer, my stepfather, who had spinal issues and pain, that we could give them pain medicine that could keep them out of pain. That was a godsend, right? I mean, it all comes out of prayer, ultimately. The things that help people are wonderful. They're, they're from God. They're, Jesus said these things and greater. Well, greater things have come forth. There's... There's medicines that help get people out of pain and all that, and that's important. And there's a lot of profit made now from the pharmaceutical companies and the doctors. And, you know, there's a relationship there. Go ask your doctor about this medicine. And so what we're reminded to do is when we watch this stuff, to remind ourselves that I'm a spiritual being and I've got... A, a body and a brain that can create healing stuff in me. That I can facilitate healing of myself. That I don't want to be addicted to some kind of drug. I had a friend, a good friend, who would get headaches. It was a genetic thing. She would get headaches. And she would take a pain medicine... That would, this is what the pain medicine did. It's absolutely ridiculous. It wouldn't heal the headache. It would make the headache go away, but it was destined to come back. It was a boomerang thing. So she's in pain, and for some relief, she'd take the medicine, which would make it go away, but it was destined to come back again. So at one point, she wanted my help to get off of it. And she was able to get off of it. But you know what? The drug companies kept calling her. And she would tell them, take me off your list. I don't want to be on your list. It did not matter. At one point, I got on the phone. I'm like, and different reps from the same company kept calling. Take her off the list. It's big business. It's big business. And we can have our spiritual defense from that negative, uninspiring energy that tells you, you need a pill. Sometimes we need some medication. I'm not saying get off all medication. 
but we can be selective as to what messages we bring into ourselves. Even if, it's, even if we're on some kind of medication, we can take it knowing I'm a spiritual being, I am whole and complete within myself, God is my healing life, and God is my source. I can't be sick. Always affirming life and health. Because ultimately, sometimes nothing can help the physical challenge. Right? And you have to find your own solutions. Sometimes nothing will do it. I think people get too dependent on doctors, too dependent on medicine, too dependent on stuff, and they don't have a clue either. They lie, I don't know, take this. Try this, do this. Why am I standing on my head three times a day, doctor? I don't know, but it might help you. <laughs> so paying attention to world of advertising. Dr. Dyer says, say aloud, nothing can make me happy. Let's say that together. Nothing can make me happy. Happiness and inspiration are what I bring to life together. Happiness and inspiration are what I bring to life, not what I purchase. Not what I purchase. And then entertainment. He says, watch, be aware of four things. Violence, hatred, fear, and sarcasm. I was watching... A couple weeks ago, I started watching a very popular TV series. It was very popular uh, a number of years ago. And it's intriguing. You know, it stimulates certain chakras. And it draws you in. And there's intrigue and suspicion and people plotting against each other and maneuvering. And, and there's stuff that happens that's violent and dark, and I find there's a part of me that that appeals to, must be the ego. But after two seasons, I was like, you know what? I don't feel, and every time, I, you know, although it's interesting and intriguing, I don't, I feel down after watching it. I feel dark after watching it. And if I told you what it was, you'd be, oh, I loved that maybe, you know, people loved it. But how does it make you feel? And over time, how does it make you feel? That's what I had to ask myself after two seasons. After two seasons, I'm like, you know what? I don't feel good after watching this show. It keeps my attention. It's interesting. But then it feels dark. Because there's violence in it. And that's what Dr. Dyer points out. There's so much stuff that we say is entertainment, but it's disguised. It's not real entertainment. It's violence. It's violence. He said in that children by the age of 14 are exposed to 12,000 violent acts. That was in 2006. Imagine how that is now. And video games. Are we aware of the video games? The video games of rape and murder and all kinds of stuff. The violence. How much violence do we expose ourselves to in what we watch? Because it affects us. That's all we're saying is be aware of and does my spirit want me to watch this? And I'll tell you, this is challenging to me because I've always liked thriller movies. I've always liked, you know, murder mysteries. I've liked some of those serial killer mystery movies. But I, I'm more and more, I'm asking myself, is this what spirit wants me to, you know, is this good for, for my spiritual essence? Am I the only one in here who ever watches those kind of movies? 
And Yogananda made a point one time. I remember reading, you know, someone had been watching these, these dark programs, and they were depressed. And he, he pointed back. He said, stop watching those shows. Because we open ourselves up to that kind of energy. Years ago, I was talking to a minister, and I was saying, you know, there's, I'm watching this show. It was about ancient Rome, and it was a, one of those dramas. And I was telling the minister, I said, you know, some of that's going on in the organization where I am. It's like funny. I'm watching this show, and the same kind of stuff's going on. Some of it's going on in the organization. And she said, well, stop watching that. Stop watching that stuff. Because it's coming into our consciousness. Is that where we want to vibrate? No, it isn't. So, violence. Uh, hatred. Hatred. Watching stuff filled with hate is not going to help anybody, any of us, right? Watching shows where one side hates the other and, and there's expressions of hatred. A lot of movies about revenge. Have you noticed? A lot of revenge movies. And now, you know, since the last 10 years, now it's women taking revenge. You know, not just, it's not just the men going to go take revenge. Now it's women who know jujitsu and kung fu and, and can use rifles and all kinds of machine guns and all. Now they're taking revenge. Yogananda once said, when the women lose their moral compass, we're lost. They've been the moral compass for for a civilization, when they start taking revenge, we're in trouble. And those are hate movies, right? A lot of movies filled with hate. And what happens when we expose ourselves to it? It affects us. Feeling that energy is not going to help us be more loving, is it? It's going to help us. So we got we to gotta remember the off switch. We got to be aware of what we're exposing ourselves to and how it could be affecting us. Is it lifting us? Am I feeling good watching this? Um, or is it, is it a match for divine energy? Or is it a match for egoic energy? And then fear. Fear. Um, he talks about when he was a kid, you know, you could walk in the neighborhood, he'd stay out till it's getting dark, parents didn't worry about where you were, um, you know, whether you were okay. It was okay to talk to strangers. There was no fear of that. How many of you grew up with that? I did. You know, we'd run around the neighborhood, play it, and not, nobody worried about us, and talk to strangers. And now everybody's, you got to be, everybody's on guard. Everybody's worried. Everybody's fearful. Um, you know, maybe the person's been, and, this guy uh, who wrote The Gift of Fear, Gavin DeBecker, he said, teaching kids to be afraid causes them to not be in touch with their intuition. When you're looking over your shoulder all the time, when your intuition speaks to you and tells you there is something to be worried about, you don't hear it because you're too busy worrying about, you know. So interesting that Kids who are loving and so on, they've got an intuition also that can sense things. I don't know what the answer is on that one, but his point is we live in a, a society now that promotes fear. Fear everywhere. On page 168, he says, Consider what I'm writing here with an open mind. In fact, let me offer this disclaimer. Every bad thing that's come your way, including any victim status, natural devastation, sickness, or what have you, is not your fault. There's no blame. You're not getting targeted for some kind of karmic payback. Rather, what happened is there, and it's yours. Since fear is a vibration, you were a vibrational match to whatever entered your life at the moment of its arrival. Remember that you live in a universe that operates by the law of attraction. So when you live in fear, you actually bring to you what you're afraid of. 
Thoughts themselves are an energy, and it's vital to realize that you need to work at not holding on to the ones that will weaken you. Keep in mind that you get what you think about whether you want it or not. And so one of his points is that there's a lot of fear in entertainment that we call entertainment. The movies that I've always liked watching, you know, the serial killers, the, and whatever, it, it activates that fear, doesn't it? It's built on fear. And there's a lot of fear propagated in our society. And I think it's important that we look at what are we exposing ourselves to and how is it impacting us? Is this how I want to feel? And we don't have to live with fear. We don't have to live with fear. Here's a wonderful statement. I live in a divinely inspired universe. I live in a divinely inspired universe. Together, I live in a divinely inspired universe. I have nothing to fear. Together, I have nothing to fear. I trust in myself and when I do so, I trust in the very wisdom that created me. I trust in myself. And when I do so, I trust in the very wisdom that created me. So we don't need to live in fear. We can trust in ourselves. And lastly, sarcasm. That there is a lot of sarcasm on television. And when he wrote this, he was talking about how most, a lot of sitcoms are very sarcastic. They're ridicule people. This humor based on hate. It's humor that puts people down. It's not just playful, bantering, good fun. It's hateful humor. How much are we seeing that in politics now? How much are you seeing that in social media? I get messages directed at me sometimes on social media that are just hateful. It's not funny, but they put in the sound, the laugh track, that, that you know, the fake laughter after a, a negative ridiculing comment on a sitcom. And so it's important that we recognize, is this really humor? Is this really funny? Or is it really disguised hate that we now call humor? Does it put people down or does it lift them up? It's something to think about, isn't it? So... There is, I think that what we talked about today is not negative. It's recognizing what is. It's being aware and developing a defense that we can use in our life. And we said that when you tune into media, that you're watching media, how is it making you feel? Is it making me feel good? Is it making me feel God? Or is it pulling me down? When you tune into entertainment, what kind of entertainment? Again, is this lifting me up? Is this inspiring me? I know it's intriguing. I know it's pulling me in. I know that I'm, I'm intrigued and interested, but how will I feel afterwards? And what impact does that have on me during the day? And recognizing that what we expose ourselves to may actually draw it into our life to some degree. If that's where our feeling nature is, we open ourselves up to that energy. Sometimes I think, boy, it's a good thing I meditate twice a day and I, I spend so much time with positive energy because of some of the mess I've exposed myself to in these movies. So I think for me, it's time I'm, I started a while ago to start weeding out some of this stuff, weeding out what I'm watching. And I'll tell you, it's hard. It's challenging because it's addictive. It's addictive. And, you know, I say that now and I'm focusing on it. Check in with me in three months. <laughs> See how I'm doing. Let's, let's uh, support each other in that. But, but at least let's be aware of what's going on. Let's be aware. When all those medications come on, know that you're creating an image of God. You don't, you've got to the greatest pharmaceutical company in your mind and your body and your spirit available to you. You're creating an image of life and goodness. When something comes on and says, you need this, you need to get this to feel better, don't accept it. You're whole and complete within.